Hello! I know you're not going to believe it, but yes, this is actually the final installment in this preliminary series on PRISM. Next week, I promise we will actually start doing Prentice's formula. The first installment of this piece is going to be talking about the OC versus the MRP. But what I want you to take away most from the next couple of minutes, which is all this segment is, is to always remember that eyes don't move. I cannot take my little narrow BD58PD and make it a 64. I can't move one eye up here and one eye down here. My eyes, your eyes, your customer's eyes are fixed. That tells you that lenses move around in front of the eye. Put this to heart. When you're doing your drawings, if you remember this and draw this, you'll get your questions right. You'll even be able to answer stuff you're not really sure about if you draw it out that way. If you try to move your eye behind the lens, you're going to get stuff wrong. So put that in the back of your mind. Let's say I have my customer's eye and their prescription is a minus 850 OU. Ton of power there. A lot of power. If I move stuff around, it's going to get ugly pretty quick. And for those of you who have not met our friend yet, my little friend, this is Super Lens. And Super Lens goes with Super Eye. And let's say I've got my minus 850 sphere. That's it. That's how the script was written. Here's my 850 lens. Take it to the lens meter, dot it up. I've got my three dots. Here's my optical center. I fill the prescription right. I do my finishing work right. And my optical center ends up right there in front of the person, person's customer's pupil, visual axes. Everything's good. You fill the script spot on. Everybody is happy. Optical center. If the person came in with a script of 850 sphere with one diopter, base, up, base, down, whatever it might be. We're going to get to that next, so don't get yourself wound up quite yet. And I deliberately move my optical center here, 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 or here. Okay, base up, base down, base in, base out, whatever. Then this point becomes my MRP or my major reference point. Those are the two terms. You're going to need to know them. You may already be familiar with them. There are a couple other pretty good examples of this with drawings in both plus and minus on the Optician Works website. Just wanted to set those in the back of your mind as well. They are pretty important and you will see them pop up in other places. Next, we're going to talk about where that direction comes from. The way I have this drawn out is to help you understand basic 180, 90 errors, which are the kinds of things that you're going to see on your ABO test, any kind of practical exams, basic PRISM theory. There are going to be some people that have their panties in a bunch. Just hold on. We'll get to quadrants and we'll get to resultant for five lessons from now. Not, not right here, not right this minute. Okay. We're going to work with four basic shapes. We're going to have our lenses drawn for the 180 horizontal. We're going to have our lenses drawn for the 90th or the vertical. And we're going to think in very simple terms of right, left. The base in, base up, base down is a relationship to your, your nose, your schnoz, your beak. Out towards the temples, in towards the nose up away from the nose, down away from the nose. I would ask you to, to, so many people draw this way, everybody thinks about it this way, everybody says it's, oh, it's a relationship to your nose. For what we're doing, I would far rather have you think of it in relationship to the center of the pupil. If I take my plus lens and I draw it out, my eye doesn't move, and I put a plus lens here, 
in relationship to the perfect center of that pupil, the visual axes, of, I can look and see that my base is out from that point. Therefore, I have base out prism in this particular eye. So I, I would strongly urge you to think about it in that way, not so much to the nose. Even when we get to quadrants, we'll, I, I still think it's a little bit better way to think about it. Nose is kind of a big picture concept. This will help you, I think, visualize a little bit more the, the finer, the, the subtler nuances, shall we say, of prism and direction. Where we're headed with the quadrants and the resultants is it's not always this simple. I mean, usually prism doesn't just happen to fall along 90 or 180. It can be anywhere, and it doesn't have to be just one of these. It can be up and out. It can be down and out. It can be down and in. And I can have a certain amount for this way and a certain amount for this way. When I combine those, then I have what we call a resultant prism, and that's, that's down the line a little bit. That's the really important stuff, actually. <laughs> Two more terms to go, then we can wrap up prism part two. One of them is compound, the other is cancel. We have two eyes. When there's a prescription involved, prism, lenses, power, our brain, it's all about what the two eyes are seeing together. It's not about one eye. So the amount of prism, wanted, unwanted, whatever it might be, is always combined. We always have to figure out what the combined effect of the power in both eyes is actually resulting in what we are seeing in our brain. So we have two other ideas. Resultant is down the road. We have compound and we have canceling. If we look at these, this particular set of eyes, here's my pupil, my visual axes here. I put these plus lenses in front of the eye. They're decentered incorrectly. And I have base in here. I have base in here. If I'm looking through base in prism here, remember that our object is shifted towards the apex. If I'm viewing my hydrant, our old friend here, the hydrant's gonna appear over here. This eye, because the base is in, apex is out here. My Hydrant's gonna appear over here. It's, it's splitting, it's making things worse. One eye is pushing this way, one eye is pushing this way. Base in, base in prism compounds the problem. You add the amounts together. That's where that concept comes from. If I switch my lens from base in to base out, now my object is gonna be shifted towards the apex of this. I'm looking at my fire hydrant and it's going to appear to shift more towards this. So these two are working together, pushing things together in the same direction. So the powers of the two prisms in combined would cancel each other out. The effect of the two prism directions is reduced. So you would lower the overall effect as perceived in the brain. That is where compound cancel comes from. And we'll do some more of those. There's a chart I'll show you. I'll be putting it up so you can work with it as we go along. Whew. Okay, prism part two is now complete. Next week, we finally start working our apprentices formula problems for errors in the 180 and the 90. Guess I better get to work on next week. See you then.